Art has been able to touch the lives of so many, allowing individual freedom of expression in every capacity, whether it's sculptures, photographs, or paintings, the end result remains in the personal interpretations we allow ourselves to partake in, including new experiences exposed to us, like AI paving a new way and bringing ideas to life, like this cover page. More impressively now, we get to examine two pieces from the 20th century in the Expressionist movement. The first painting I was drawn to was the apocalyptic landscape made in 1913 by German artist Ludwig Meitner. He was born April 18, 1884 in Silesia, Germany, which is today Poland. After leaving home in 1903, he attended a Royal School of Art in Poland for two years. From there, he went to Berlin, where he earned a living by drafting illustrations for fashion advertisements. In 1906 to 1907, he lived in Paris where he took classes at the Julian Academy and other art academies there. In 1907, he returned to Berlin, where he lived in extreme poverty and without any means to pursue his artistic activities fully. A turning point came in 1911, when Niner became frequently going to Berlin's Café de Westens, where he associated with avant-garde artists and poets. That year, he received a grant to be used toward his work from artist Max Beckman, with whom he forged a close relationship with. Working in an expressionist aesthetic now, though still not attached to any particular group, he started painting and drawing self-portraits, portraits of expressionists and writers and cityscapes. His cityscapes from that period are his best known works, and because they are wrought with catastrophe, destruction, and expressions of doom, are commonly referred to as his apocalyptic landscapes the distorted, fantastical compositions, which often feature explosions and figures running from them in fear, speak to the atmosphere of chaos leading up to World War I. In this case, this message being conveyed is understandable through the harsh, jagged lines that describe a state of disaster or peril. From the top, it's distinguishable that it isn't just a normal sunny day. The mixture of blues, dark and light, allow for the creation of clouds to look gloomy or like a storm is forming. And examining it further, buildings, trees, and roads are all distorted, as if the environment as a whole is trying to adapt to the upcoming potential and destruction that is inevitably approaching. Paranoia sets in the people as they run every which way, even some detail on the face, looking as if shocked, capturing this frantic feeling. Disbelief in what, what they are seeing and pointing leads to the bottom right of the painting. Under the bridge, it looks as if there are tanks being transported through the railway system, fully establishing that a war is underway. All of these elements together show the perspective of this pre-doomsday setting of a city prepping for what's to come. Interestingly enough, there are approximately 15 of his apocalyptic landscapes, some being painted double-sided. This being one with the portrait of Willie here, which was made after the apocalyptic landscape in 1914. The following painting I ended up being drawn to had just as much going on titled The Orator, made in 1920 by Magnus Zeller, who is also of German descent, born on August 9, 1888 in Bisenrode. He stands from a family with an impressive line of Protestant pastors, including his father. This can be seen as the foundation of his changing but continuous examination of Christian subjects and symbols. His earliest works from before World War I already cover the crucifixion as a topic, where Zeller then made his first exhibition experiences with the Artists Association Berliner Secession. After he was drafted in 1915, the first relevant changes in his imagery caused by the horrors of the First World War occurred and are well documented in his drawings and graphic works. For instance, Magnus Seller in Paris, made in 1914, shows his upbringing roots, while School, made in 1925, shows a bit of what he's been through. Regarding content, the displays of otherness, the grotesque, and perverted from his expressionistic phase are supplemented with religious motives, numerous landscapes, and portraits. The dichotomy between visions of horror on one hand and the longing for religious transcendency on the other hand has been the struggle between the demonic and the divine. 
The Order is a perfect representation of the two, with variations of people surrounding the campus, some with human faces and others with faces of the war. Considering this painting was made two years after the First World War shows how present and relevant this trauma of the war got to him and in the people he may have saw die before him. As Germany's defeat in the war and their subsequent downfall of the monarchy brought on the nationwide revolution, those eager for dramatic political change were optimistic. Artists believed they would play an important role in building a better society and join together in groups such as the Working Council for Art. In the order, Zeller portrays the religious dimension of modern politics, which it incites ecstatic devotion in its followers. The charismatic speaker, more preacher than politician, may have been inspired by the communist leader Karl Liebknecht, who Zeller saw in Berlin refer Liebknecht's murder by right-wing forces in 1919. With that in mind, it allows the painting to go even deeper. The majority of the figures of the painting possess the demonic death type of face, with mouths and eye sockets wide open, appear as lifeless beings withered with gray, with the thorough mix of color brings life into itself. Like the man on the platform, higher than anyone else, looks of importance, got his nice dress through and frame with a teal suit, is full of light and direction. Most of their arms and hands point left towards him and for those behind him, go along with or at him. Right about the middle, as well, is a boy smaller in build compared to the rest, literally looking up to the center, all of which points to the brightest part of the painting. The light coming from above points to his open arms as if calling out a proposal to those still around, those that died, and to the future generation who will live through these consequences. Progression in any capacity was necessary for Germany, and in this painting, it gives hopefulness and optimism to keep hope as a lot of change was going to be necessary in having an optimistic future.